Yes, good afternoon to you out there. You are welcome to another edition of Insurance Talk Show. I am Bola Debaju, and with me today I have my Oga, my senior professional colleague, Prince Babatide Adeleke Ugutade. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Bola. Thank you. Yes, sir. Prince Babatide Adeleke Ugutade is a fellow of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers and he is the current president, that is the 22nd president, you imagine. So Nigerian Insurance Brokers, um, Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers um, should be more than 22 years or if yeah, not 22 years, 61 years. <laughs> so, he is the current president and the 22nd president of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. And you will be sure that he can do justice to the topic we are going to discuss today. He has con contributed immensely to the growth of the Nigerian insurance industry. And that is for about 42 years, you know, with a track record of integrity and candor. It belongs to a lot of professional bodies and philanthropic clubs. Once again, I want to welcome you, sir, Prince Babatunde Ogontade. And the topic we are discussing today is um, the importance of insurance brokers. The importance of insurance brokers. So what, what can you really tell us about an insurance broker, sir? You know, we have a lot of agents, a lot of intermediaries in the industry. Okay. But we want to talk about insurance brokers today. Good morning, listeners. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you, we, sir. We are talking about the role and importance of insurance brokers. Yes. Uh, well, first, I have to talk about the umbrella body for insurance brokers. Mm -hmm. And I first must tell you that we have over 600 corporate members. Spread across, spread across Nigeria. Mm. The Nigerian Council for Registered Insurance Workers was established in 1962, but became empowered by an act of parliament number 21 of 2003 mm. uh, to become a chartered body. Mm. So it's a body of professionals. Mm. And then um, for every profession, we are talking about skill. Yes, sir. For the insurance broker, we are talking about articulation. Of skills, mm. yes, cannot over the years mm. of conscientious practice. Yes, sir. we are talking about training, we are talking about calibration. Mm. So, for insurance brokers, what they do, insurance brokers are just a uh, catalyst mm. in the value chain of insurance. Insurance who do not get consumed, you know, the catalyst never get consumed in a chemical reaction. Yes, so we are there and then we are to ensure that uh, value is given. Mm. to both the insured and the underwriter. Fairness, we ensure fairness. Mm. We ensure that um, what you desire is what you get. What you get. But sometimes the product uh, of insurance, there are several products, but mm. you need to be skilled to know whether this product is uh, good for you for or what you? you desire. Yes. And in the modern day, well, nobody sells street jacket policies anymore. At all. Everybody wants to buy tailor-made policies. Mm -hmm. for their kind of um, uh, interest mm -hmm. and businesses. Mm -hmm. So it is the role of the insurance broker okay. to profile a business, mm -hmm. an individual, mm -hmm. corporation, or public mm -hmm. entity, such that the mm -hmm. needed products mm -hmm. are what are bought. Mm -hmm. And um, it is the job of the broker. You know, sometimes the people sell insurance, but brokers encourage you to buy. Mm. You buy what you need. Sometimes yes. because you are not buying a product that is off the shelf. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need a broker, a professional who knows. Okay, this is the, the this is the business that you're supposed to. What mm. are your risk exposures? Mm -hmm. How do you moderate them? Mm -hmm. How do you limit them? Mm -hmm. And uh, at what cost? Mm. Because we also ensure that uh, it is affordable, mm -hmm. the best secured uh, uh, policy at an affordable cost. Mm -hmm. So we just don't look for affordable policies, but it must be the best. And that's yes. the essence of you engaging a broker. 
Thank you so much, sir. How can someone be an insurance broker? We yeah. know that not everybody can be a broker. You know, there must be conditions. Yes, um, I must tell you that. The basic entrance qualification mm -hmm. is education in any area of endeavor. Mm -hmm. You could be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. You could be an agri specialist. You can be a journalist. Mm -hmm. You can be a linguist. You can, and you may have studied insurance primarily, mm -hmm. maybe at the Polytechnic or the University. Mm -hmm. But that qualifies you to enter. But mm -hmm. it does not satisfy you as a broker. You have to go through specialized training. training. Then, but in Nigeria at the moment, we have a training arm in the industry, which is the Chartered Insurance Chinese Institute of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We collaborate with them. That is the NCNRB collaborates with CIA to yes, you develop uh, contents of study okay. for specialized skills okay. for brokers. But number one, you go to qualify professionally. Mm -hmm. Mm. After you qualify professionally, having obtained the CRI diploma, professional mm. diploma, then you now start mm. writing uh, our own professional exams, exams, which we now do. But before now, you mm. must have been in the industry for about five years with mm -hmm. your CRI diploma, then you now mm. come, then we now induct you. You have to go through some training mm. and induction. Then mm. you must have been working in a broken firm. The fact that you may have been the MD of an insurance company, but you may not become a registered insurance broker immediately. immediately. You must undergo some study and some kind of induction. Mm -hmm. Because it's a specialized area of insurance yeah. practice. It's a professional area. Mm -hmm. Every other person in insurance is a trader, including the underwriters. Mm -hmm. It is only brokers who have the acumen, who have the, uh, the training and the capacity, mm -hmm. who are calibrated to underwrite and understand risk and then we are very much involved in thank product you. development among other things thank you so much sir um no one can just come in and say i want to be a broker no. the person must pass through a training or series of trainings you know it's, it's continuous only, yes it's continuous yeah thank you so much sir so is there an extra cost or fee charged by an insurance broker like okay and a policy holder takes, um, or let me say, a policy holder has a broker now who is handling the businesses. Okay, free. let me help you. And <laughs> whether you okay. go directly to another writer to purchase your policy, oh. or you come to a broker, mm -hmm. you will not pay additional additional cost. But what I tell you, what brokers do? Okay, the actual valuation for premium calculation mm -hmm. as an inbuilt commission element for mm -hmm. agents and brokers or intermediaries generally. Mm -hmm. So whether you go directly or not, or you not. will pay more. But I tell you that when you come to a broker, you may discover that you will pay less. Mm -hmm. Because a broker knows, okay, for instance, you are taking a fire policy mm -hmm. and you have some devices that can fight fire, that can encumber mm -hmm. fire, mm -hmm. you get discounts. Yes. But when you go directly, the underwriters will not tell you this. They won't. I can also tell you that if you've been insuring for so long, as a broker, I know that, okay, let me go and negotiate with them. You've mm. been insuring with them for so long, maybe about mm. three, four, five years, and you've not mm. had any claim. You start saying, okay, give them, give this client long term agreement discount, among other discounts that are available. Whereas you will not have known of those things that are mm -hmm. available. If you go directly. If you go directly. Mm. So the, the the additional issue is that a broker is like a timer. Mm. He knows when to intervene mm. in the maintenance of a policy. Mm. Because your broker is your ally who is always close to you. He mm. discovers, okay, as your business grows, mm -hmm. your risk exposure grows. Mm -hmm. Then he comes in regularly because mm -hmm. uh, for us as insurance brokers, you don't buy a policy for a client and you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You must continue to monitor the growth, the exposure. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have relocated your businesses. This new environment may be prone to certain kind of risk that mm -hmm. you are not in the other thing. Mm -hmm. Then the broker will go that and by that way, he keeps getting various kind of endorsements within mm -hmm. the lifespan of a policy before it expires. So using a broker has tremendous benefits. benefits. Thank you, sir. Then what are the differences? Because I know that we used to hear of agents, 
you see agents going about also um, selling insurance products. Uh, what are the differences between the agents and the brokers? Yeah, I'll tell you this. Uh, when the market development uh, research and initiative came, we call it MDRI, that was brought in by Nikon. Apart from agents and brokers, there are several other channels for distribution of insurance. Mm. We have bills that they do on the internet, which we call the web aggregator. We have um, brokers, insurance brokers, who are the trained professionals. We have agents who see insurance marketing as a meal ticket. Mm. But the insurance broker is the real person who is called, who is mm. the professional in mm. between all these channels of distribution. Mm. And it is only the insurance broker that you can hold liable for heal advice, mm. for negligence. You can hold a, 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 an agent a negligent. Mm. Because the agent is tied to the apron of the underwriter, that is the insurer. Mm. It's not your agent. But a broker does becomes the agent to the insured and also an agent to the underwriter. So the underwriter pays the broker. You, you do understand that yes, now. Sir, you, you can sir. sue a broker for negligence, mm. neglecting to remind you mm. of your you know, your policy expiring. Mm. I give instances. I know they have professional indemnity policy. That is the to tell you. Must have it. That is the only level of intermediary shape mm. that has that kind of element required mm. to practice. Mm. Every other one is just like a real estate agent that collects their premium and they, they collect their commission mm. and they move on. Mm. And you don't stand the risk of losing your premium. Mm -hmm. Even you know, in most cases, you pay to your broker. Mm -hmm. Your broker is regulated by law to pay within a certain period. Yes. And he must show evidence. He must do all of this. There are compliance issues mm -hmm. in insurance booking mm -hmm. that agents don't have to go through. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir, for the um, enlightenment. Then, um. What does the policy order stand to gain by using a broker? I think we have mentioned that... Well, that you start to gain peace of mind. Peace of mind. You can continue to face your business. Professionalism. The brokers, yes, mm -hmm. professionalism. You have an ethical practice. You have mm -hmm. a service. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can continue to face your business. You mm -hmm. leave the trouble of uh, your risk to management the to the broker. Okay. If you're out there... And uh, you are listening to us. You can call this number to ask your questions or con to contribute. We have 0902-569-1960. 0902-569-1960. You can call this number. And at the same time, you can send a WhatsApp message to 0806-192-3347. 0806-192-3347. For seven, if you want to ask any question about insurance, about um, insurance brokers, about anything on insurance, you can always call us in. Thank you. Before we go on break, there's one other question I would like to ask. Sir. Okay, is a is a case study because I handled a case for somebody some years back and. Um, the person was like, you are my broker. You are supposed to get police report for me. You are, you are to do this for me. And now I said, it's not the work of the broker to get a police report for the uh, insured. I don't know, maybe you have another view of that or you want to explain, sir. Can you just okay. enlighten us the more? Um, is it the duty of the broker to get police report? Primarily, reports? it is not the duty of a broker yeah. to obtain Thank police you, sir. report. Thank you. you know, of course, in Nigeria, to obtain police reports under the law, the law requires that you depose to certain um, affidavit of loss. Mm -hmm. In the affidavit of loss, you have to state peculiar mm -hmm. circumstances of loss or or the every particular. You you had, mm -hmm. you need details like date, time, mm -hmm. and other things. Mm -hmm. So you cannot depose to what you do not know. Mm -hmm. And with that, that is a primary ingredient for you to obtain a police report. Yes, sir. Then when you go to the police station, you need to state to the police, if you were there, if mm. it happened to you, you cannot obtain on, the, on, the, on behalf of a third party. You are not a lawyer in this instance, except the person is mm -hmm. deceased, incapacitated yes, somehow. 
but it's not the duty of a broker. But if you do it as ancillary services, it just adds to your value. Uh, Thank you so Your much, valuable sir. disposition. So you just do it voluntarily. It's not that it's your duty. Yeah, you assist not to do it. You yes, assist the yes, client assist. to do it. Yes. Welcome back to this edition of Insurance Talk Show. I am Bola Adegwaju, and I have here with me Prince Babatunde Ugutade. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. My pleasure. We appreciate you, sir. My pleasure. Now there's a question here. Somebody sent a WhatsApp message. The person said, if my insurance broker is not rendering the expected service to my satisfaction, what should I do? Can I sue the broker? Well, if there's no uh, ground for... Uh, if, if, the, if, if you have not incurred any loss due mm. to the dereliction of duty, okay. all you have to do is just dispense with the broker okay. and appoint another one. Okay. But if you have suffered any financial loss, Mm -hmm. occasioned by the dereliction of duty of mm -hmm. financial broker. Yes, that's why brokers are required to have a professional indemnity cover. Okay, and I, I remember this um, other scenario as you were talking, like mm -hmm. brokers that collect premium and they don't remit, and uh, maybe there's a claim and the usual comes up. In that a situation, one can sue. Yes, of course you can sue. Mm -hmm. And then the claim will be the PI policy of the broker will be called upon to pay okay. your claim. And in addition, indemnity. and in addition, the broker may have okay. a jail sentence. Mm -hmm. You don't get away with such things anymore. Such, such things. Thank you so much, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that question has been answered because that's the next question here. Can a policy order change his insurance broker? Yes, you mm -hmm. can change your insurance broker, but not to meet policy mm. you change your training well okay you change your training well. so the policy would have expired and by the time no you it just towards the end of the policy when the broker gives you a, bro a broker is supposed to give you your renewal notice 60 days ahead of renewal mm -hmm. you can just say thank you we will not be needing your services at that point you can now notify another okay. right, another broker, broker to, to take, take off. yes to take to off because they're negotiating before the expiration of that policy so that there'll be no gap in cover mm. okay sir can one have more than one insurance broker because i have seen that happening also um can somebody have more yes than one uh, it depends broker? on the volume of the business mm -hmm. for corporates and uh, public institutions where the business is large mm. and the income is uh, huge mm. then you could have more than one you, mm -hmm. The consortiums are allowed. Yes. They are allowed. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't imagine having one car, you want to use three brokers. What could be the likely <laughs> connection from that one? No, one is unnecessary. So, but but we for are corporates, billions of, uh, corporates, industrial yeah. businesses, oil and gas, oil and gas aviation, mm -hmm. public uh, mm. uh, accounts, then you, we, have, we have instances where you have about 100 brokers on a single account. We have instances mm -hmm. where you have much more. You have instances where you have mm -hmm. just five. You know, you have instances where you have two, depending on the volume and the level of work that is required. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, sir. So, um, I would just want to conclude that it is usually in corporate environments, corporate businesses, that you get consortium of brokers or more than one broker. No, you see, it doesn't have to be. Okay. For instance, now, for ease of uh, um, administration of your risk, mm -hmm. you may just converge all of them with one broker. Mm -hmm. But if you are a high net worth individual mm -hmm. that has properties all over the place, mm -hmm. you may choose to say, okay, for my immovable assets like mm -hmm. houses and the rest, mm -hmm. you give to this broker. Mm -hmm. For my cars, I give, give to, to this. this. For my personal lives, that is talking about my life policy, my uh, yeah, group personal accident, my health insurance, mm -hmm. I give to a particular broker. Mm -hmm. But sometimes for individual, it is better for you to just use one broker so that the broker is able to manage all of them. Everything. So you don't have the issue of uh, 
oversight mm -hmm. that may mm -hmm. now lead to liability yeah, arising because be that one but you will not know it. yes but just have one broker mm -hmm. just have one broker okay thank you so much sir one other question here can a policy holder decide on which insurance company to use for his policy if there is a broker as in you have a broker now and you are now giving the broker no this is the insurance company i want you to use i don't want this this insurance company can a policy holder say that can yes it does happen sometimes owing to experience of the insured if the experience has very good relationship with a particular underwriter mm -hmm. and um, they have uh, the goodwill mm -hmm. the insured may insist this is the client that i want but it's mm -hmm. usually the broker who should advise and insured mm -hmm. but in the situation that they are coming to a policy that has been in place and the insured has had good rapport mm -hmm. and good experiences mm -hmm. he insured and he just say, okay this i want company a mm -hmm. but if you have greater understanding and you are able to confirm and you are sure within yourself mm -hmm. that if you change to uh, company b mm -hmm. the insured will get greater value why not you put the advice there you put it in writing mm -hmm. so if the insured says no it is no but if Michelle says, okay, go ahead and do it, mm. you know you have put yourself mm. on the spot. Mm. You must ensure that wherever you take that policy to must be better, then, secured and guaranteed than where the insured had been. Thank you, Sam. So um, I would like you to just address the public. And uh, I think there's a program on the yes, we are, event. We are. Yes. For us as brokers, we are always on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, from tomorrow, 3rd of uh, November to 12th of November, uh, some of our members are going to be at the Lagos International Trade Fair, mm -hmm. holding at Tafa, Tafa Balewa Square. Mm -hmm. uh, we implore members of the public to visit uh, the NCRIB stand. You have quite a number of brokers there. You also have un underwriters who are partnering with us. Mm. The advantage is that you have your pick. Mm. You're like going to a Igbo market, you want to buy dry fish, and you have, you know, it mm -hmm. is easier than buying from a side street. Mm -hmm. So you also have, you will discuss, you will discuss your exposures, they will analyze for you. Then, mm -hmm. then if you find them worthy of being appointed, you do that. Then beyond that, we are going to be all over Nigeria talking about other events of the council. I just want to say that nobody should buy an insurance policy or sign any contract of insurance without talking to a broker. It's like deciding to represent yourself in court. Even if you are a lawyer, you still need somebody who will not be sentimental, who will be dispassionate, who will be professional in the discourse of things. Mm -hmm. I think nobody should operate an insurance contract without the use of a broker. It is free. Mm -hmm. And when I say broker, I mean a registered insurance broker, okay. certified yeah. as a certificate carrying member of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. Mm. Thank and you. I, thank you, sir. As we're saying that, I just remembered also that brokers usually have licenses. So you, you can ask for your broker's license to be sure that... Even if the, mm. if the person tells you is a registered broker, just go to www.ncrib.net, you'll find the list of registered list brokers. Of we update on a daily basis. On a daily As basis. As people join us, we operate. Mm. Then you can also go to uh, our office at 58 Molay Street, mm. Insurance Brokers House. If you want a broker that is uh, in your neighborhood, mm. they will tell you, they will give you quite a number of mm. brokers there, then you make your choice. But nobody will tell you go and meet a particular broker. Mm. It is a matter of your choice. Thank you so much, sir. I'm so happy to have you today in this discussion. And um, if you are out there, you have listened to us, you can also join us again next week. This program is uh, a weekly program. It comes up every Thursday by 12.30 p.m. I am Bola Adebaju. Thank you, Prince Babatunde. Good day for Thank coming. Olga, the president of Nigeria Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. Thank you. It's Thank my you pleasure. So much, Thank, Thank you so much. Thank bye. You. Bye bye.